بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر آسما صدیق فرام اناٹمی ڈپارٹمنٹ اینڈ ویری وارم ویلکم ٹو یو آل ان سیکنڈ ایئر ایم بی بی ایس آن دا بہاف آف دا فیکلٹی آف اناٹمی ڈپارٹمنٹ اختر سعید میڈیکل اینڈ ڈینٹل کالج لاہور ناؤ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس وتھ یو دا اسپیشل ایمبریالوجی ان سیکنڈ ایئر ایم بی بی ایس اینڈ دا ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن فار ٹو ڈے از دا ڈیولپمنٹ آف باڈی کیوٹیز اینڈ دا مزینٹریز سو واٹ از دا آبجیکٹو آف مائی لیکچر ٹو ڈے از دیٹ ان دا اینڈ آف دا لیکچر آل آف یو ول بی ایبل ٹو understand the development of extra embryonic as well as intra embryonic coelom so what will be the differences between the extra embryonic and intra embryonic coelom how they are going to develop and which structure of them is making up the body cavities then from this uh, body cavity there is further development into the peritoneal cavity into the pericardial cavity and the pleural cavity so how these are going to develop and what would be the lining of the all of the i hope you are familiar with all the developing structures here in the second week of development and you have studied them in general embryology classes so what you are going to see that there is bilaminar germ disk which includes the epiblast and hypoblast with formation of two cavities one cavity which is above the epiblast here that is the amniotic cavity and that is lined by amnioblast cells and the cavity below the hypoblast here this is a yolk sac this whole structure here that is the extra embryonic mesoderm because it is lying outside the embryo so we label it the extra embryonic mesoderm and this is the area of the connecting stalk then you have seen there is the cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast which are helping in the formation of the placenta this extra embryonic mesoderm is going to split into two layers because of the development of the cavity and this cavity which is going to enlarge and it is becoming here this whole area that is showing you that cavity which is lined by the layers of extra embryonic mesoderm that is a chorionic cavity and we label it the extra embryonic coelom and here the layer of the extra embryonic mesoderm which is lining the yolk sac is its planktonic layer and the one which is lining outside along the cytotrophoblast that is its somatic as you can see here that there is now this extra embryonic mesoderm and in this extra embryonic mesoderm there is development of multiple cavities which later on become enlarged coalesce together and because of their union and they become confluent then this is making it a larger extra embryonic coelomic cavity now because of the formation of this extra embryonic coelom the extra embryonic mesoderm splits into two layers one which is lining along that yolk sac is the extra embryonic splanchnopleuric mesoderm or this is the splanchnic layer of this extra embryonic mesoderm it is also known as the visceral layer and the outer one that is the extra embryonic somatopleuric mesoderm or the parietal layer of extra so here again now you have seen when this is going to become larger cavity that is known as extra embryonic coelom at the end of the second week of development and only where the extra embryonic mesoderm is connecting that whole of the structure with the outer cytotrophoblastic layer and you can say that is the placenta later on forming here so this is the connecting stalk rest whole of the area in the extra embryonic mesoderm there is formation of extra embryonic coelom 
and what is this layer along the yolk sac which is now here is now definitive or secondary yolk sac that is its planktonic layer and the one which is lining outside internal to that cytotrophoblast this is the somatic layer of extra embryonic mesoderm so extra embryonic coelom develops in between the two layers of the extra embryonic mesoderm you have seen here so keeping all this into your mind then we are moving towards uh, an intra embryonic coelom now here you have seen that this structure where you can appreciate this is now trilaminar germ disk that has been uh, formed here making up that uh, ectoderm then is this mesoderm this is intra embryonic mesoderm and this is now the endoderm which is towards the yolk sac so we label it intra embryonic mesoderm because now this is present in the uh, germinal layers which is helping in the formation of different structure of the embryo so this is the intra embryonic mesoderm here you can see that this ectoderm is folded into and they are making up the neural tube structure by the process of neurulation and this uh, intra embryonic mesoderm that is uh, divided into three layers three components one which is uh, uh, very closer to the midline towards that notochord this one is the par axial mesoderm helping in the formation of the somites when vertebra then is the intermediate plate mesoderm this intermediate plate mesoderm is responsible in the development of urogenital structures and this one on each side that is the lateral plate mesoderm so these are the components of intra embryonic mesoderm which is par axial mesoderm then is the intermediate plate mesoderm and lateral plate mesoderm here again same as in the extra embryonic mesoderm this intra embryonic mesoderm again split into two layers and one layer which is along that ectoderm that is now called the parietal layer of the intra embryonic mesoderm this is parietal or somatic layer of intra embryonic mesoderm the one which is lying along the yolk sac that is the visceral layer or the splanchnic layer of intra embryonic mesoderm again here this is a cavity which is going to be formed in the lateral plate mesoderm because of the development of uh, clefts and cavities which unite together making a single cavity splitting the lateral plate mesoderm into parietal and visceral layer and in between these two layer is that cavity which is the intra embryonic coelom or we label it the primitive embryonic body cavity so actually this layer this area which is developed because of the splitting of intermediate lateral plate mesoderm into the visceral and parietal layer then here the body cavity is developing which is intra embryonic coelom so here in the third week of the development you have already seen that there is a process of neurulation in which the ectoderm that is going to develop and form the neural tube and uh, this is located dorsally so the neural tube is going to be developed by ectoderm and it is located dorsally to the embryo and ventrally there is another tube formation which is by this yolk sac which is going to develop into the gut tube and this process is completed by the cephalocaudal folding and uh, all the lateral foldings these are helping in the development of these tubes so you can see here that ventrally this is a gut tube and dorsally is a neural tube so you can see 
very easily here that there is a tube on the top of the another tube. So there is a tube on the top of another tube. Then you have seen here that uh, the intraembryonic mesoderm, its lateral plate component that is going to split into its two layers, one which is going to lie along the ectoderm, this is now ectoderm and along with that, this is the parietal layer of lateral plate intraembryonic mesoderm. Along with that parietal layer plus this ectoderm that is making up the smetopluri. This whole structure is smetopluri. And its other layer which is its visceral or splanchnic layer, it rolls ventrally and it is going to lie along with the yolk sac. So this is its splanchnic layer and the visceral layer of lateral plate mesoderm. So this layer which is that visceral or splanchnic layer along with its underlying endoderm of the yolk sac this whole structure is making up the splanchnopluri. So now what you are going to see here the another uh, event which you can appreciate that you can see that uh, this structure which is the smetopluri on each side this is making up the lateral body wall folds. So these are the lateral body folds making up the wall of the lateral uh, you can say this is the uh, lateral body wall so that is composed of smetopluri. So its uh, parietal layer of the mesoderm along with its ectoderm it is going to migrate and move ventrally on each side. So this is the lateral body wall folds which are going to move ventrally and then they are going to unite in the midline. So here you can see that union that these lateral body wall folds which move ventrally and then they meet in the midline and unite here making up now this is the ventral body wall. So this hole is the lateral body wall now on each side and anteriorly ventrally when this structure is going to unite in the midline then this is making it is a ventral body wall. Now you can see inside this whole structure this one which is going to be enclosed by these lateral body wall folds this one these are enclosed because of the movement and migration of these folds towards the ventral aspect this whole now area is intraembryonic coelom or the primitive body cavity. Now you can easily say that this is the primitive body cavity or intraembryonic coelom is lined between the parietal layer of the lateral plate mesoderm and visceral layer of the lateral plate intraembryonic mesoderm. So actually now this whole structure that is intraembryonic coelom and body cavity now which is going to develop later into the pericardial cavity, the pleural cavity and peritoneal cavities. Now from another view you can see here that uh, this is the above which is the ectoderm here you have seen the neural tube formation and uh, here is this head foldings above to that is the amniotic cavity below is that yolk sac and by the cephalocaudal folding as these are the head and tail ends they are moving closer together they are helping to incorporate an other cavity which is lined up by the endoderm of yolk sac. This is the gut tube. So here you can see this hole is the gut tube which is actually the yolk sac that is endoderm lined sac and then it is incorporated inside into the embryo as a gut tube. 
here is only one connection with the yolk sac which is the omphaloenteric duct or vitelline duct so through that is only the mid gut portion is connecting with the yolk sac and also if you have see that cardiogenic area along with its pericardial cavity here which is now uh, we will uh, discuss later how it is developing so this cardiogenic area which is towards the ventral aspects very close to the buccopharyngeal or oropharyngeal membrane then this is also going to move and relocate in the midline and ventral aspect of the embryo and while this uh, migration and relocation of the pericardial and cavity and the uh, cardiogenic area it is also incorporated that yolk sac which is the area of foregut so again here you can see this is a yolk sac which is now developed into the foregut so that's how all the uh, cephalocaudal folding and lateral folding is helping in the formation of different structures in the embryo so how that intraembryonic coelom has developed you have already seen it that it appears as isolated spaces or cavities in the lateral plate mesoderm of the intraembryonic mesoderm then in the fourth week of the development these spaces they fuse together and they are forming a single horse shoe shape or u shaped cavity which is known as intraembryonic coelom the intraembryonic coelom it is dividing the lateral plate mesoderm into the somatic and parietal layer which is towards the ectoderm and the splanchnic layer over the endoderm as you already have seen it somatic mesoderm plus its ectoderm is somatopleury and splanchnic mesoderm and its endoderm is splanchnopleury so here again you can see that uh, this one that is the area of uh, uh, ectoderm and this is now the intraembryonic mesoderm having paraxial mesoderm intermediate plate mesoderm and lateral plate mesoderm then these spaces and cavities appearing here which is making her making here the intraembryonic coelom and by this intraembryonic coelom formation the lateral plate mesoderm splits into two layers one along the ectoderm is its parietal or somatic layer along with ectoderm is metopleury and which is uh, along the yolk sac is its splanchnic or visceral layer of lateral plate mesoderm which along with that endoderm of yolk sac is known as splanchnopleury so here if you see it from above this is the cut section and then if you see it from above if i say that sit inside the amniotic cavity that means you are sitting on the ectoderm this whole blue ectoderm is the uh, this blue uh, structure is ectoderm so when you are sitting on it and look down towards its floor and in the floor is this ectoderm which is going to show you the process of neurulation here on dorsal side is the primitive streak of the ectoderm and then this slipper shaped hole structure that is showing you the process of neurulation and neural tube formation so please if you cut one edge of that ectoderm to see underlying structure then definitely you will see there is the intraembryonic mesoderm so along with that in intraembryonic mesoderm these structure white in color these cavities and spaces these are indicating you that u shape intraembryonic coelom so along that intraembryonic mesoderm you can appreciate this is a u shaped intraembryonic coelomic cavity again these arrows they are showing you the structure of intraembryonic meso 
derm which is developing into the intraembryonic coelom so this is a u shaped intraembryonic coelom and uh, this intraembryonic coelom that is going to communicate with the extra embryonic coelom as well which we have already seen before that uh, in the intraembryonic mesoderm is the intraembryonic coelom formation this is going to communicate with the extra embryonic coelom outside along its distal lateral edges so these white arrows are indicating you the intraembryonic coelomic cavity which is a u shape and then this is going to communicate from here towards the extra embryonic coelom which is labeled by these red arrows so there is a communication between intraembryonic and extra embryonic coelom so this one which you have seen that is a u shaped cavity which is developing that is going to have this curved part which is uh, now whole of this curved part is developing future into the pericardial cavity then is its limbs on each side which is the pericardio peritoneal canal and the distal ends are making up the future peritoneal cavity so what are the derivatives of the intraembryonic coelom as we labeled it that this is a primitive body cavity so you must understand that this is going to give rise you the three body cavities present in the human body first of all is a pericardial cavity which is the curve of the u that one which i have showed you then is the two pericardio peritoneal canals where there is the development of lungs and then this is making it a future pleural cavity these are the proximal parts of the limbs of u and the two peritoneal cavities which are the distal parts of the limbs of u each cavity is lined by the parietal layer which is derived from somatic mesoderm and a visceral layer which is derived from the visceral mesoderm so what are the important function of intraembryonic coelom definitely as it is developing into a body cavity or a space so it is helping to provide the room for the organs to develop and move so they can grow easily and they can move inside this space and also there is a connection between the extraembryonic and intraembryonic coelom as i have told you so this is helping in physiological herniation as you have seen that the mid gut loops are going to herniate into the umbilical cord and then there there is a further growth and at the 10th week of the development it retracts back into the abdominal cavity so this communication and connection between intra and extra embryonic coelom is going to be uh, lost at 10th week of intra embryonic life this is the sagittal section of the embryo and here you can appreciate very easily that u shape intra embryonic coelomic cavity this intra embryonic coelomic cavity as you have seen ventrally there is a curve of the u which is developing into the pericardial cavity and then this pericardial cavity is connected to the distal limbs which are future peritoneal cavity through these uh, limbs which are pericardio peritoneal canal so that is the proximal part of the limbs of the u which is making up here the pericardio peritoneal canal although later on they are going to develop into the pleural cavity and distal limbs are the peritoneal cavity and you can appreciate that this is the ventral aspect where is this pericardial cavity is going to develop from that curve of the u shaped intraembryonic coelom and the limbs which is actually the pericardio peritoneal canal these are now uh, moving 
dorsolaterally and present on each side of this foregut. This yellow structure, this is the developing foregut and this is now from the heart area, these are dorsal aorta, which you can see. So here this is the foregut and on each side of the foregut, you can see these two limbs, which are the pericardioperitoneal canals communicating towards the peritoneal cavity distally. This black arrow is indicating here that this is the extra embryonic coelom that you have seen which is developing outside the embryo in the extra embryonic mesoderm. So the extra embryonic coelom is having communication and connection with the intra embryonic coelom at its distal end. So towards the distal limb, towards that peritoneal cavity, this black arrow is showing you the connection of extraembryonic coelom with these white arrows which are the intraembryonic coelom. So this connection is very important helping in physiological herniation between 6th to 10th week of intrauterine life as you have seen that the gut loops it herniates through that connection into the umbilical cord then there is further development of a small intestine and some part of large intestine later at the 10th week it retracts back and return to the abdominal cavity so at that time of the 10th week of intrauterine life this connection is also lost which is between this extra so here you have seen that uh, peritoneal cavity which is the distal part of the limbs of the u-shaped intraembryonic coelomic cavity that is the primitive body cavity as you have appreciated in previous slide so it is connected with the extraembryonic coelom and it is helping in herniation of the midgut loop through this connection and this connection it, it is uh, going to lose this connection at 10th week when midgut returns to abdomen back now how this peritoneal cavity that is developing so first of all you must remember that originally there were two peritoneal cavities as you have seen there were the two limbs of the u-shaped structure of intraembryonic coelom so there were two peritoneal cavities but after the lateral folding of embryo this peritoneum becomes a single cavity how this happens so first of all you can see and appreciate here that this is a gut tube and on each side there is the peritoneal cavities these peritoneal cavities are separated ventrally by the double fold of the peritoneum which we label this is mesentery so what is mesentery mesenteries are the double fold of peritoneum as you can see here so this double fold of peritoneum which is ventral mesentery here and dorsally this is dorsal mesentery which is attaching the gut tube to the dorsal body wall they are separating these two peritoneal cavities so there are two peritoneal cavities but later this ventral mesentery disappear so as you have seen as there is uh, the disappearance of ventral mesentery it's making up a single large cavity of peritoneum and only dorsally it has a connection with dorsal body wall through this dorsal mesentery the ventral mesentery it is only going to persist in the area of the caudal part of the foregut we will see in the coming slides but here you must remember that the ventral mesentery most of the area of the gut tube disappears making a single large peritoneal cavity and the gut tube is only attached with dorsal body wall through dorsal mesentery and what is mesentery this is the double fold of the peritoneum together making up the mesentery So mesentery 
by definition is a double layer of peritoneum which begins as an extension of visceral peritoneum covering the uh, gut tube then this mesentery connects the organs to the body wall and it helps to transmit the vessels and nerves to it the dorsal and ventral mesenteries divided the cavity into right and left peritoneal half peritoneal cavities but the ventral mesentery disappears except at the area of caudal foregut which is the area of the development of stomach and the proximal part of duodenum so by disappearance of this ventral mesentery now there is a single large peritoneal cavity so here again you can see this is a sagittal section in which you can see that yolk sac and this is the gut tube that is uh, uh, having this uh, connection through that omphaloenteric duct and this one that is now you can see this is the area of uh, that is showing you the transverse section of the embryo and uh, in the same region where you can appreciate the lateral body wall folds which are moving towards the midline ventrally and then they are uniting together they are meeting together fused here making a large intraembryonic coelom or body cavity this ventrally here that connection this is a ventral mesentery which is disappearing here and dorsally this is a dorsal mesentery so when this uh, mesentery disappeared then they are forming a single cavity but before that here you can see with the presence of that ventral mesentery there is right and left halves of the peritoneal cavities but this disappears and it only persists in the areas of caudal foregut so again here at different areas if you see the sections here you can see this is the area of the heart and this one this whole structure area that is the area of the heart where you can see that u shaped its curve of the u making up the pericardial cavity then a just lower point here when there is a development of a lung in this region then this is area which is showing you the pericardio peritoneal canal communicating to the peritoneal cavity and again here at this area uh, which is the section d at this point where you can see that uh, gut tube communicating with the yolk sac so this is showing you these peritoneal canals and then they are making up a single peritoneal canal with this dorsal mesentery only at the area of this e at this section so here this is only this area so at that point there is a complete single large peritoneal cavity lined by the visceral layer along the yolk sac and this outer layer along that body wall is its somatic layer so how the pericardial cavity develops for that purpose you have seen that uh, there was the curve of the u shaped structure which is going to develop into the pericardial cavity and uh, this pericardial cavity and uh, the heart area which is initially at uh, the ventral aspect near oropharyngeal membrane then this is migrating ventrocaudally when there is the cephalocaudal folding so during that head folding this moves towards the ventrocaudal aspects and it lies anterior to the foregut so during that movement and migration you have seen the heart lies ventrally and the foregut that is going to lie dorsal to the heart behind it so the heart become anterior to foregut and uh, that is the area of esophagus it is bounded by an outer so, so this pericardial cavity is originally connected with the two pericardio peritoneal canals then it is going to become separated 
from this pericardioperitoneal canal by formation of one membrane like structure which is a pleuropericardial fold so this whole ventral aspect here you can see that is the heart and pericardial cavity so if you see here that uh, this whole area that is now uh, you can see the foregut and on each side of the foregut this is the pericardioperitoneal canals shown you by these arrows so here this one the pericardial cavity which is present here above this structure this area which is showing you the sinus venosus this is separated by a fold from the lateral body wall this is a fold of that uh, uh, mesodermal tissue which is pleuropericardial fold this fold is moving from the lateral body wall towards the midline and then it unites in the center making up a membrane which is pleuropericardial membrane so ventral to this membrane is the heart and pericardial cavity this whole cavity and dorsal to that pleuropericardial fold then you can see here dorsocaudally this pleuropericardial canal is now developing into the pleural cavity so that's how the pericardial cavity is separated but from the pericardioperitoneal canal so here i would like to show you this very important structure which is present between the pericardial cavity above and this vitelline duct below so between the thoracic cavity and vitelline duct is this uh, uh, very thick ridge of the splanchnic mesoderm this is known as septum transversum so what is a septum transversum this is our thick ridge of the splanchnic mesoderm so this is lying between the pericardial cavity or thoracic region above and vitelline duct below and this area is typically for the development of the liver and also this is forming central tendon of diaphragm but this uh, septum transversum is a mesodermal thickening very thickened ridge of splanchnic mesoderm present here and when this pleuropericardial fold is uh, going to move towards each other this is enclosing in it the phrenic nerve and the common cardinal vein so that pleuropericardial fold which after uh, union together when they unite together they are making the pleuropericardial membrane the contents of that membrane are the phrenic nerve and common cardinal vein you must remember so this is the one very important fold separating the so here you can see these folds which are from the lateral body wall approximating to each other and then they unite in the midline making up here the pleuropericardial membrane so this pleuropericardial membrane encloses in it while its migration and uh, its approximation it also encloses in it the phrenic nerve which is from that lateral body wall and common cardinal vein and now this whole area is the pericardial cavity with this developing heart and now this area which is pericardioperitoneal canal here now the lungs are growing fast this this is the lung tissue this is growing fast and fast and making that pericardioperitoneal canal on each side very narrow cavity so now when it this space with the development and growth of the lung tissue become very narrow then this is called pleural cavity so this is now the outer one is the parietal pleura and on its inner aspect this is the visceral pleura you can see so both of these layers together enclosing in it the pleural cavity so how pleura is formed by the development of the lung inside into the pericardioperitoneal canal this layer is its visceral layer and this outer one along the body wall is its parietal layer enclosing in it the pleural cavity 
so again in this picture you can see that uh, this one is the curve of the u making the pericardial cavity and this is the connection towards the pericardio peritoneal canal which are going to be separated by the development of this pleuropericardial fold and membrane enclosing in it the phrenic nerve and common cardinal vein and then when they unite in the midline they are dividing the pericardial cavity ventrally from the pleural cavity dorsally and here you can see the rapid growth of the lungs into that pericardioperitoneal canal and making it a narrow pleural space so regionally the bronchial buds they are very small relative to the heart as you have seen and then when they grow laterally into the pericardioperitoneal canal this pleural cavity it expands ventrally around the heart and it splits the mesoderm into the outer layer which is also helping to form the thoracic wall which lie along the lateral body wall and the inner layer that is making up the pleuropericardial membrane as you have seen separating the pericardial cavity from the pleural cavity so all the previous pictures which i have shown you have explained in the next so i hope this is giving you the better concept so this is the about the pleuropericardial membrane when this is formed it is enclosing in it you know the common cardinal vein and phrenic nerve now this is also helping in the formation of fibrous pericardium so actually this is uh, the pleuropericardial membrane which is separating the and surrounds the serous pericardium which is the typical pericardial cavity but this fold of the pleuropericardial membranes this help in formation of parietal pericardium so the parts behind the heart they fuse with the ventral mesentery of esophagus forming the mediastinum and separating the pericardial and uh, from the pleural cavity at the seventh week so also they are helping in formation of mediastinum which is a space between two lungs so right pleural cavity separates from pericardial cavity earlier it is at earlier time than the left one so now how the pleural cavities are formed you have seen two pericardio peritoneal canals they are connected ventrally with pericardium and distally with peritoneal cavity but they become separated from pericardial and peritoneal cavity you have seen how this is separated from the pericardial cavity by the formation of pleuropericardial fold and then membrane and then it is separated from the peritoneal cavity now by the formation of pleuroperitoneal folds and membrane so these are separated by pleuropericardial membrane which is dividing and separating the pericardial cavity with the pleural cavity and pleuroperitoneal membrane separating the pleural cavity from peritoneal cavity so now this is the pleuroperitoneal fold which is a crescent shaped fold on each side you can see uh, migrating moving from the lateral body wall ventrally and this area is the area of the septum transversum which i have already shown you that uh, this septum transversum which is a thick ridge of the splanchnic mesoderm so towards this septum transversum from the dorsolateral aspect of the body wall the pleuroperitoneal fold which is a crescent shaped fold on each side they are moving and approximating towards septum transversum and fused there and then they become fused they are separating the pleural cavity above with the peritoneal cavity below so this is now from below where this is the peritoneal cavity now here this is very important structure the septum transversum and this pleuroperitoneal membrane they are very important structure for the development of diaphragm which we will study in like next lecture and i hope you will uh, remember these two structure when we will 
discuss the development of diaphragm. So this is the same thing that uh, this pleuroperitoneal membrane, these expands from the body wall, they fuse along with the dorsal mesentery of esophagus and septum transversum and then it is separating the pleural cavity from peritone peritoneal cavity and same here the right pleural cavity separates from peritoneal cavity earlier than the left one so this is showing you again the septum transversum ventrally the pleuroperitoneal folds dorsolaterally expanded and approximating fusing with septum transversum and also with the lateral mesentery or dorsal mesentery of the esophagus so this is the area of esophagus you have seen so along with its dorsal mesentery it is also going to fuse with that so it is completely now separating the peritoneal cavity below from the pleural cavity above so here i end up with today's lecture i hope you understand it very well if still there is any query and any problem feel free to contact me and ask questions and uh, in the next lecture we will uh, start with the development of diaphragm thank you very much